Hey guys, Colin here, hope you're well. So today we're gonna to take a look at a really interesting sample called Olympic Destroyer. This was a particular malware sample which had impact at the Pyeongchang 2018 Winter Olympic Open Ceremony. Um, the impact was felt um, for users at the ceremony. There was a lack of Wi-Fi. There was also some issues with the ticket machines and probably some other issues around the complex as well. Uh, and as a result of this particular malware, which is a wiper sample, so this particular malware is destructive in nature uh, and was designed to cause impact and also laterally move throughout the network. Uh, in order to uh, to further cause impact throughout the organization. So we'll take a look at the sample. Uh, I must point out though that most of my analysis and most of the stuff I'm gonna go through uh, was lifted from uh, the awesome Cisco Talos's blog, uh, which described the analysis and the behavior of this particular sample. So I'll link that blog to you in the description of this video. And also I'll link to you a blog post from Endgame as well, which describes some of the process injection, um, which we'll see as well uh, of this sample as well. So definitely um, all credit to those guys who've done some super analysis and definitely go check out those blogs. So this is the sample. I've lifted it from Virus Bay. If you are a malware, malware researcher, then definitely check out Virus Bay because it's full of uh, great samples and also a great community of malware researchers as well. So if you can get yourself an invite code, uh, get onto the platform and uh, and start sharing and uh, and start performing analysis of malware that's on there and helping the community as well. So you can also get the sample from uh, Hybrid Analysis. You can also get it from Virus Total if you have an intelligence account. Uh, but this is where I've got it from today. Uh, and we're gonna use a 32-bit Windows 7 virtual machine here to perform the analysis. And also I've got my Remlux distribution here, so my Linux distribution, and we can perform um, some behavioral stuff from a network point of view, and also we'll do some static analysis uh, using Remlux as well. Um, one of the things, I've got the, the sample here on my desktop. I've got Process Hacker running. I've also got Process Monitor running. Uh, and we can uh, just see I've got my filters set up for where processes are created and processes exit. Press Control and E and get that live, uh, get that running. Um, a couple of things to note. Uh, one of the, the tools I really, uh, two tools I really like to use first off when I perform any analysis. First one is PE Studio. Uh, it's a great tool um, which has been written by Mark, and it's something which can um, give you some very, very quick um, initial analysis of what malware is, might be up to and, and where to go with your uh, further analysis. One of the things I always look at is the resources section, and you can see here in red it says resources unknown, and you can see here there are five resources with the signature of unknown, which make up the majority of the particular file. It gives you the MD5 hashes, and you can also see that it has a high entropy ratio as well, which would indicate that these uh, these samples are probably packed or encrypted in some kind of format. Uh, you can also see quite handily um, P Studio gives you the first few bytes uh, of what the resources are and you can see that actually in this particular instance they're all the same. If you wanted to you could dump them out right click and click on dump and you can dump out those particular uh, resources. Uh, you can also if you wanted to you could use Resource Hacker uh, and re uh, Resource Hacker will actually um, just show you uh, in like a hex editor view as opposed to having to dump out the files. You can have a look at those particular samples uh, and you can see that each resource, you can see the full hex uh, of those particular files. Uh, and you can see they are indeed all the same or at least the, the first, uh, the, the, the kind of header is the same. Um, and it probably indicates to me that it's a, an MZ header. These are probably executables that are embedded into the actual sample. Um, and probably encrypted using the same kind of key. If you wanted to, I use a tool um, called SIG and Search or Sign Search, depending on how you pronounce it. I've got it installed on Windows. It's also on Linux as well, uh, but it's really cool. Um, in terms of being able to perform analysis of your sample to tell you whether or not uh, there are any indicators of encryption uh, algorithms used within that particular sample. So what you can do, let's open a command window here. <clears throat> let's run SIG and search. You can see the options that are uh, um, associated with the with the binary. Uh, I'm gonna use option F here, capital F, treat it as an executable, but also uh, give me the, uh, the offsets where uh, they're found within the binary. Uh, I'm gonna feed it uh, the name Olympic Destroyer.exe, and it's going to perform some analysis for me and tell me whether or not there are any indicators of encryption algorithm being used within that particular binary. And you can see that, so it's got a classic random incrementer and it gives you the uh, the offset, and it also has a couple of indicators for AES as well, so AES256. So the chances are there's some AES code in there uh, using a static AES key. And if you wanted to, you could, uh, you could go to that particular memory location. What you'll have to do first though, um, is just remove ASLR from the uh, from the sample itself. So use CFF Explorer. This is the second tool I always like to use to see whether ASLR is enabled or not. Go to the optional header, go to DLL characteristic, click here, and you can see here it says DLL can move. Well, that means ASLR is enabled for this particular sample. If you untick that, click OK, and then you can come out of it and save the binary. We'll save the changes, overwrite it, we'll say no, uh, and just give it a new name. Uh, and we'll just say like ASLR removed or whatever. Um, and you get this new uh, this new binary uh, and then you can uh, de um, 
you can stick it into your debugger, for example, and then that will enable you to um, go and have a look at the that will have it, enable you to go and have a look at those memory locations, and you can see exactly what uh, is going on around that um, that particular point. So we can stick it. Did I did it work? Let me stick it into x64 dbg, um, and then we can go. For example, uh, we can go to that memory location, and you wanted to, you could poke around and see. So it's 4090a7. So press Control and G 4090a7. We'll go there, uh, and here we are indeed, in fact, in some kind of uh, AES type procedure, um, but this is really kind of in the weeds of it, uh, and if you wanted to, you could go and find what the static key would be and, and do all that kind of uh, reverse engineering yourself. Not for this uh, particular analysis. Let me come out for this. Uh, what we're going to do, what we're going to focus on here is some behavioral analysis, so let me flip back to, um, and let me get rid of that um, particular binary as well, we don't confuse ourselves. We've got process hacker going here. We've got our process monitor. Let me just clear the noise that we've created so far. Uh, and also just uh, out of interest, I'm gonna run a couple of tools here. So in my um, Linux distribution, if I can spell it, I'm gonna run Wireshark, and we're just gonna capture any of the uh, network traffic from my Windows virtual machine. Uh, so let me just point that to F0, uh, and that'll start capturing, that's great. And also I'm gonna run fake DNS, just so you can, we have a, a DNS server to reply to any requests which might come from my Windows machine as well. So what we can do is just run the Malware, see what happens, and um, we'll, we'll have a look from a process standpoint what, what exactly goes on under the hood in just a second. Just to give you a kind of flavor for what goes on, um, the this particular sample, uh, those resources which we saw were encrypted, they actually get un uh, decrypted and written to disk, so no need to, to kind of mess around really with the uh, AES stuff if you don't want to. You can just get the um, raw executables from the disk once they've been unpacked uh, and written. Uh, and those um, samples, which are then written to disk, are actually two of them are browser. One is a browser stealer, so it will actually steal your credentials from uh, any stored browsers on or any stored credentials from browsers on the machine. Uh, another one is a system um, credential stealer as well, so it'll also steal your credentials from um, the LSAS memory uh, from, from from memory within LSAS, uh, which is something akin to Mimi Cats. Um, and it uses those credentials to then uh, reform another binary. Um, so the, the same destroyer binary that we have now, uh, that we haven't executed yet, it will reform a new binary and it will kind of add on to the list of hard-coded credentials within that binary, uh, anything uh, it, which, which is found from your victim machine. So actually one thing I should show you uh, out of interest, let me just go uh, a new terminal window here. Let me go onto my desktop and my Linux machine. You can also run strings. Um, I, I like to use like the parameter dash n10 to give me strings of length 10 uh, or more. And you can just um, dump out any strings of length 10 uh, from the actual binary. And you can see there's an awful lot. You can see the manifest, there's a load of gobbledygook. And actually, you can see here, pyongchang2018.com forward slash CRM admin, IPS admin, mail.admin, admin at 2018, etc. So let's just kind of feed it into grep, uh, grep.i 2018. You can see here that um, it, the, the binary itself is already hard coded with these credentials, this domain, pyongchang2018.com, and also these credentials. We've got individuals credentials. We've also got uh, kind of like admin type credentials as well. So that would suggest there's, there's a degree of either insider knowledge from, from the actual uh, attackers, or maybe the binary that we've seen here uh, that, was, um, that we're performing analysis on is actually part of an infection chain, right? So it might have infected a few machines from the pyongchang environment, uh, and now actually these are the credentials which it managed to, to Kind of scoop up uh, and is and is then in, and then encoded into the into the uh, the new executable and try to propagate around. So who knows? Um, so anyway, that's that's cool from a strings point of view. So we're going to run the malware and we'll we'll, we'll log it from a. Um, uh, Procmon point of view, so we'll have a look and see what processes are spawned. We've also got the network inside of things running in our Linux machine as well. So let me run it. Double click it. And we can see a few things are happening here in, in Process Hacker. Um, and we can see that there are child processes which then have further child processes. We can see processes are killing, are being killed and destroyed. Um, and, and we can see that uh, the destroyed process, the main one here that we executed has a child process which seems to be kind of sat here uh, nice and active. So let's just kind of flick over to uh, Procmon to kind of see what happened. Well, there's definitely a lot of noise here. There's definitely a lot of stuff to go through, uh, but we'll try and whiz through it. Explorer.exe, we'll start here from when I double click the malware. Feature I really like about Procmon, I can right click this and go exclude search indexer.exe. So we'll just get rid of that and just creates, uh, it just gets rid of a little bit of noise. We can see here there's a, a child process, ewgvu.exe, which is spawned and there's given um, two parameters to that particular um, 
process one two three is one parameter and the second is a named pipe uh, and we can see there's another uh, another process with a random looking exe name with the same parameters and these named pipes are actually so the process these uh, child processes can then communicate back to the parent process uh, so that's interesting and one of the things that um, we will find in just a second is, is those two processes are actually the uh, the browser stealer and the system stealer system credential stealer and they're communicating that information back to the main process and then that main process can then use that information to then uh, reform another executable which is then uh, then uses to further propagate through the network. Um, so a little bit messy, I like to use, cont uh, press control and T, I like to use the tree view, uh, and this gives you a, a real good understanding of what pro which processes are responsible for what. Uh, so we can see here, so the parent Olympic destroyer, uh, we can see it spawned these two child processes, which are the ones which had the name pipes and parameter 123. So these are the uh, ones, the browser stealer, one's the uh, system stealer, we don't know which, um, but we can we can find out if we need to. And we also have this other child process, underscore lxk.exe, which is still running, right? So this one here, uh, and this this is responsible for some badness we can see here. So first one, it deletes all the volume shadow copies from the machine. So that's kind of indicative of ransomware. Ransomware tends to do that. Uh, but in this case, we're not actually encrypting all the files. Um, we'll see in just a second what actually the malware is desired to do is to stop all of the services on the machine. Um, and that's pretty nifty. Um, so the other thing it does, it uses WBA, uh, sorry, WB admin uh, to delete the catalog. Uh, and that just further kind of uh, prevents any any recovery from from sysadmins, etc. We can also see it uses BCD edit, uh, and that that um, edits the boot config and disables any potential recovery from when you restart Windows. And then a further kind of kick in the teeth, it also deletes your system and it also deletes your security event logs as well. So it's going to kind of cover its tracks from from that point of view, just in case you are uh, performing some forensic analysis on the, on the victim machine. So that's all well and good, right? So it's got rid of a load of badness, or sorry, it's performed a load of badness and got rid of a load of uh, forensics from our machine, but we don't actually see it from a behavioral standpoint. Like my machine is still kind of operational. So what is actually going on here? Uh, let me just stop my uh, procmon just to uh, make sure that we're not um, kind of polluting what we're looking at here. Well, interestingly enough, we saw that we saw various processes being spawned in the temp directory, and we can go to that temp directory and we can see those files that have been created, um, and we can have a look and see what um, see what they are, and that might give us an, an indication of uh, of what else is going on under, under the hood. So. We'll do that in just a second. Um, we can see actually a couple of a couple of things have just happened here, right? So the first one is I've got a Notepad process which is spawned and then exited. Well, that's that's interesting. Um, and also I've got this this child process is still um, prevalent. Uh, but it's now an orphan process. So the parent process of Olympic Destroyer actually disappeared. And you can see that the binary has disappeared from my desktop as well. So it's kind of uh, tidied itself up after a, after a short space of time. So you can see I have this um, process, uh, this uh, executable, which it wrote to disk, which is um, 1.8 meg in size. Well, actually, if you stick that into PE Studio, you will notice that um, we've got this very, very similar properties to what we saw before with the main process. We have those five resources. If you did your checks, you, you'd actually see they're exactly the same hashes uh, and they start with the same bytes. So they're all encrypted with the same kind of stuff. But this is the new binary which is formed with any kind of, um, with any with any captured credentials which it's found uh, from the machine. Um, and so it's found those credentials and it's reformed this binary and it's then gonna try and use this binary to, to push to the next victim um, with, uh, with the credentials with the credentials that it's just been able to capture. We've got this 36 kilobyte uh, binary lxk.exe. Well, if I have a look here, this is the, the one we saw before, which is now the orphan process, which is the responsible for, for wiping the machine uh, and performing all of the badness. So that's pretty interesting. And um, we've also got uh, a couple of other things to look at here. We've got underscore tij.exe. Well, if you stick that into PE Studio, actually what we've got here is um, something which is interesting. And in just a second, it will load up. If you have a look in the resources section, you can see one of the resources. It's an executable. It's called psexec. Um, and this is actually a genuine binary. This is genuinely um, a psexec. Um, uh, application and so the malware is dropped PS exec and it uses PS exec as one of the techniques to propagate around uh, a network uh, and part of the network discovery which we'll see in just a second it uh, it, it uh, looks in the ARP table it also profiles systems within the local environment and then it attempts to connect to them using PS exec or WMI uh, in order to further propagate around the network and then we've got these other two binaries here so and if you have a look um, we'll stick one of them into PE Studio for example we put this one in 
One is the browser, um, the browser stealer, and one is the system uh, credential stealer, uh, both of which have a resource which is encrypted. You can see the file ratio takes up the majority of the file. It has a high entropy ratio as well, um, and it's an, an encrypted probably with the same key uh, that we saw saw earlier on within the uh, within the main binary. And if you have a look at the imports, for example, and, and PE Studio is awesome for this, it will kind of group all of the imports for you. It will show you which ones are blacklisted, uh, and you can see actually you've got virtual protect. So if you wanted to um, unpack this malware, unpack the resources that's probably something you would set a breakpoint on and perform some additional analysis with uh, but we don't need to do that uh, because we, we kind of know what it's up to we did see actually if you had if you had a look in um in in here in process monitor and have a look at the operation where the operation contains the string right um I might just take a little bit of time to do that. But one of the things that we'll see actually is this this particular temp file here um and that's gonna take a little while so I'll let it chew over that we had this temp file uh, which was created in our um, in, our in, in our temp directory so a temp file in the temp directory it looks pretty innocuous but actually what this temp file is um, is uh, a SQL light file if you stick it into a hex editor like hxd you can see it's, it's got a SQL light format three header um, and if you look if you use a tool like SQL uh, DB browser for SQL light for example we can just do open database um, and let's just point to the temp folder um, and give it all files oops all files let's go down and uh, have a look at this temp file. We can see that actually these are the uh, the browser logins which it's attempted to to steal. Now there's no login information on my machine because it's a virtual machine. I don't use it to log into anything. I use it for malware analysis. But if there was any, you could have a look in browse data and you could actually see any of the entries in that SQLite database, any of the usernames and passwords which is managed to enumerate uh, and exfiltrate from your machine. Um, and that has been used to uh, to then reform this new binary here, so IRL.exe, uh, which is uh, the new one which is looking to then then push around the uh, push around the network. Uh, so that's all pretty interesting. If we have a look here, let's just go back to our um, our virtual machine in uh, Remnux. We can see there's actually a lot of um, a DNS requests that are originating from my machine. I'm I kind of keep scrolling, and there's an awful lot of um, uh, IP addresses it's trying to propagate through or try to trying to communicate with rather. And if you have a look in um, Wireshark and you can actually have a look at the PCAP, you can see there's a lot of reset packets because I'm not actually listening on uh, this particular port, but you can see it's trying to communicate over SMB. So it's trying to communicate over port 135. My um, my Linux machine is responding back with reset packets because I don't have a uh, an SMB listener set up. Um, however, if you did, you'd be able to capture that traffic uh, and see exactly what it's trying to, uh, see exactly how it's trying to perform that network request. Uh, but needless to say, this is very, very indicative of the likes of tools like Eternal Romance or Eternal Blue, which we saw uh, way back when within uh, like the WannaCry and the NotPetya and the Bad Rabbit ransomware situations as well. Uh, so very, very interesting. And we can see the kind of uh, the traffic it's generating and, and the frequency of the traffic it's generating in order to attempt to propagate around uh, the local network. Um, so that's cool. So one of the things we can do also is have a look and, de and, and kind of decompile um, and debug uh, the main application. Uh, so because it removed the original one, I'm going to use the one that it's uh, that it rewrote for me, uh, and we'll stick it into x64 dbg. And we can uh, one of the things you could uh, probably want to do straight away is have a look in the current module uh, for any strings of interest to us. Uh, just let that pass for just a second, uh, and we'd be able to kind of have a look and see if there's anything of interest to us. And we can see here select star from Win32 process stop trace. Uh, well, that's indicative of uh, interfering with the processes and services on the machine we can also see here we're pretty interested it's going to ping um uh, ping um uh, 0.0.0.0 to so null, uh, and then it's also going to, which is kind of like a sleep technique, but it's also gonna, then going to uh, look to see whether this particular text file exists. If it does, it's going to exit, and if it doesn't, it's going to write it. So maybe that's an, ind an, an indicator of compromise that you could look for on a machine, uh, or even set and see what um, see what the malware would do in order to um, in order to write that file. We can also see some evidence here. So select DSCN from DS Computer. Uh, this is uh, part of its network discovery of how it's looking for machines to um, uh, on your local network to query. So it's going to look for IP addresses uh, based on that query, uh, that WMI query. Uh, and we can see a few other bits and bobs which are pretty interesting. We could go and have a poke around as well. Um, probably no other strings which really kind of jump out at me as um, as stuff of of interest. So again, let's let's just. Let me go to um, let me go to this one for example. Double click it, and we go to actually the the code itself uh, within um, uh, within the CPU window, uh, and we can see the kind of uh, API calls around it. Probably nothing too too interesting for us to to get our head into there. Let me go back into references um, and have a look at this one. 
Um, and we can see here, right, so where are we? So yeah, yeah, plenty of stuff going on around um, working out whether, it's, yeah, essentially it's, it's looking for that file, whether it exists, and then it's going to move on uh, and perform, um, you know, the further commands from, from this particular function. Okay, cool. So one of the other things we probably want to do is have a look at um, the, the orphan process, which is uh, lxk.exe. So we have a look at this one, which is the, the, the kind of destroyer. It's only a small binary and it doesn't appear to be packed either. So we press Alt and F9 to get to the main config, uh, the, main, um, the main module rather, have a look at the strings in here. And we can see actually, um, here's the stuff that we saw from a behavioral standpoint. Um, one, of the, one of the things we, we, we noticed really is that like from a behavioral point of view, that yes, it got rid of all the volume shadow copies and it's made all of the recovery um, a, a, a very, very difficult indeed, if not impossible. Uh, but we don't actually see any kind of impact from this particular machine at the moment. Uh, and I wonder why that is. Um, so let's have a look at like services active, for example. Well, this looks like it's going to enumerate and we can see here. So there's enumeration of services on the machine. Um, and actually what this code is designed to do, um, we can see here query service config, open service. Um, we can actually see chain service config W. So this particular API call here is very, very interesting. In, and we can actually have a look at the uh, parameters which is being passed to this one here, um, error control four, service no change, all of the parameters that are being passed to uh, this particular API call are going to actually disable services on the machine. So we've got some enumeration of services on the machine going on. And we can see here that it's going to change the, uh, the configuration of those services uh, to actually prevent the uh, services from being um, from from from, uh, from enabling at boot. So next time this machine reboots, for example, all of the services on the machine are, are, are set to disabled. So therefore, we're not going to have any services on the machine whatsoever. And if we further kind of go down here, we can see see uh, some other API calls of interest to us. We've got the create files uh, and we know about that kind of stuff that we've seen uh, previously. Uh, find next file, close, and that's going to be, in fact, this is to do with, uh, this is interesting actually, it looks like, um, let me just go back to my references here because we've got some interesting stuff going on with the files it's writing. It looks like it's enumerating the shares there. Uh, I'll see whether there's any interesting strings that we can immediately point to. Let me go back to my CPU window. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, okay, so it looks like um, there is some um, enumeration of files from shared um, uh, from, from shared drive locations. Um, so yeah, that's interesting. So maybe it overwrite, I think it overwrites them. If I remember rightly, if I read in the blog, it overwrites uh, files that it finds from, from shared folders. Um, so something that you could definitely explore. Uh, this will be the connections here. So the uh, WNet open enumeration resources, add connection, cancel connection, etc. That's that looks like um, it's going to be if we, you can even breakpoint on that and run it. Um, that looks like it will be looking for shared folders within the um, uh, within the environment to connect to. Uh, and in fact, let, why, why don't we do that? Just out of interest, we'll do breakpoint net open breakpoint there as well. Um, and just before I do that, if there's anything interesting as well, we'll have a look at um, so here's all the bad stuff that we saw before from a behavioral standpoint. It looks like it passes the um, uh, the, the strings as uh, parameters to this particular function, 11D1000, and that performs the, the execution of the command. Same here, WB admin, uh, delete catalog quiet, and then it calls 11D1000, and the same for deleting the... Um, uh, the system and security event logs. And we can see one thing we haven't seen yet is initiate shutdown of the machine. And we can see that actually just before that, the machine is going to sleep or the pro sorry, the process is going to sleep for a while. If you had a look and saw, uh, we need to look up, uh, I certainly do anyway, and maybe someone can tell me in the description or in the comments of the video what that value equates to. It probably looks like about an hour or so in terms of milliseconds. It, it's a very high number of milliseconds that the uh, process is going to sleep for. Uh, and then after it's slept, it's going to initiate a system shutdown. Uh, once it's done that, um, the system is going to shut down and reboot and it's not going to have any services uh, that come alive because they've all just been previously disabled and therein lies the wiper technology of this particular malware. So it's disabled all my services, it's rendered all my forensics useless um, and now we've got a system which uh, effectively won't boot up. So that's pretty interesting. So anyway, I've got a couple of breakpoints set there so let me just run just to see whether it hits anything of interest. We can see it's hit uh, WNet um, open enum. Uh, so that's cool. Do we get anything in, this, in the next... Um, Next one for strings. Uh, so we can see here, so we've got VM shared folders. Uh, so it's enumerated that one, Microsoft Terminal Services, Microsoft Windows Network, uh, Workgroup. There's probably no more. And you can see here, so it's got my machine name, 
and it's trying to it's going to attempt to connect there and if you had a look actually in our in our pcap we could probably see some 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 of that communication that's associated with it as well so that's interesting uh, anyway let me let me uh, just finally demonstrate the um, the final kind of characteristic of this malware so we know we've got the uh, the service running here at the moment it's going to shut down my machine after the process has slept for a while but let me just kind of force it and restart the uh, restart the virtual machine so you can see exactly what happens so we know we're infected with this once the malware's decided to sleep or finished its sleeping and decided to shut down my machine we can see that uh, vmware starts uh, starting windows and we're now in some kind of boot loop i got a blue screen flash up there vmware windows st tries to start uh, and nothing happens so the malware is taking effect it's rendered the machine useless and that's obviously what they saw at the olympics as well so hopefully you've seen some cool tools that you can use in your own uh, malware lab to uh, analyze malware of this nature uh, hopefully you found that useful if you have then please like the video uh, if you do love love the video then uh, please subscribe to the channel and you can also chat to me on twitter at cybercdh uh, and i look forward to your contact okay thanks guys